Good morning, Mission family. We are going to worship. If you want to stand up, happy Father's Day to everybody in the room. We're going to worship the best father in the whole world.
adore on our good father right now. Oh, God, we love you. Oh, you loved us so much. You gave your son for us because of your love for us. And we adore you today. Oh, God, we adore you today as our heavenly father that loves us so much that you gave. Just lay your hands on them. Just release a blessing over them on Father's Day. Just release a Father's blessing on them. That their Heavenly Father would pour out a blessing on them today. So God, we just ask that you release on every father in this room and every father that's watching online that you would release your blessing today on them you would pour out your spirit on them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, why don't you take some, a few minutes and love on each other and tell each other, happy Father's Day.
Well, good morning, everyone, and hello. Um, I can't be up here without saying Happy Father's Day to all of you amazing fathers out there. So I just pray that you feel so loved and honored and celebrated today. And I got to give an extra shout out to my husband who hates me for it. But you are the most amazing, handsomest, I would say another word, but we're in church, um, man in the universe. And happy Father's Day. I love you. <laughs> All right, guys. I have the honor and privilege of... Um, sharing our announcements this morning. So we've got a couple of things coming up. So please make sure you guys come and you're a part of it. This is where we do family. This is where we do life. This is where we do community. And one of those things is our Independence Day family barbecue. And it's taking place um, on Sunday, July 2nd. And it's going to be a time of food, first off. I mean, who doesn't want to come and be a part of food? And it's going to be good food, too. Food, games, bounce houses, and I did get knowledge, and I know they shared it with you guys last week too. There's going to be a water slide, and I just want to share with all of the adults in the room. I did ask if we could go on it, and they said yes. So I personally am going to be ready to go down that water slide, okay? So all of you, please join me. Don't make me be the only weird adult that's going down the water slide. Thanks. Uh, but join us on Sunday, July 2nd after church. Um, so what, how it goes is this. Feel free to bring sides or an additional food to barbecue, okay? So we hope to see you guys there. Make sure you invite your friends, family, stranger, neighbor, you know, everybody. We've also got VBS coming up. We have an amazing children's pastor, Miss Amanda, who has put so much time and love into just planning for this, her and her team. So mark your calendars. It's July 11th through the 14th. So if you guys have kids, make sure you register them. You can do that on imissionchurch.com. And it's going to be a time of just um, building relationships, knowledge of biblical truths, and them having fun being crazy wild kids. Okay? So bring your kids. If you want to be a part of it, you can also see Miss Amanda. If you feel it in your heart to volunteer, to be an influencer in that, do it. Do it. Yes. You can register for all the stuff we're talking about on imissionchurch.com. And then next Sunday, we've got special guest Ivan Tate with us. So join us next Sunday, June 25th. Ivan will be with us. He'll be here for our 10 a.m. service, which you guys are all at right now. We're also having a special service on Sunday night at 5 p.m. So make sure you're there. It's going to be super fun. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ivan is the founder of What Matters um, ministries and missions. He has a heart for people, um, and he is just so good at sharing the love of God in a clear and honest way, and he's also super fun. So you guys are going to want to be a part of that. So hey, we got a lot going on. You can check out all of the stuff at www.imissionchurch.com, and just come and be a part. All right, guys? We love you. We're so happy you're here, and good morning. Thank you, Paris. Can we give Paris a round of applause? I don't know if you all know the treasure that Paris is. Seriously. Keep it going. One more time. One more time. She's just, she's great. Well, I have the honor of receiving our tithes and offerings today. Who is excited for that? Yes. So we have our declarations that we're all going to read together. So if you will stand up. How many of you get, like, stressed about reading in public? No one? Let's take a deep breath together. One more. We've got this. We can do it. There is power in our declaration. Okay? The word of God does not return to him void. So we're speaking this out, and it's going to have a harvest. All right. We, the mission, are thankful that our Father is the most generous person in the universe and declare that no debt can survive in the atmosphere of his generosity. We, the mission, are thankful that we are his children and declare that his generous DNA lives in us. Therefore, we give ourselves as conduits of poverty-breaking prosperity and liberality, and we declare that we will have resources enough 
and more than enough to meet every need and fund every dream. Amen. So we have giving stations all around the room. The ways to give will be behind me. And then we also have bags that will be passed around. So you can just put it in there. And amen. Save sometimes. Good morning. <clears throat> Hope you're doing well. I know I am. And uh, got to clear off a couple things here this morning before I begin to speak. I got to find the thing. Here we go. All right. I'm getting there. <sighs> Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. It's good to be in the house with y'all. I did that for Texas because Dano's in the house this morning. Good to see you, Dano. <laughs> and welcome home. Welcome home. Good to have you in the house and back where you belong. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's all right. Let me find, find something here. All right. Uh, a couple things. I'd just love, love for you to take advantage of some Father's Day gifts. Sons and daughters, if you forgot to buy your father... A gift. There's opportunities in the in the mission school a store. The mission hats, two different colors, two different styles. They're beautifully done. And also there is a there is a key bob out there that says iron sharpens iron. It's a great little self already made uh, handmade leather key bob actually made by my son who happens to be in the house this morning. Jeremy, it's good to have you here. So I'll let somebody take those. Yeah, if you don't mind, Deb, Ryan, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Uh, listen, next Saturday morning, Ivan Tate is going to be here for the men. So men of the house, it's time for you to stand up and show up. All right? Next Saturday, 9 o'clock with Ivan. It's going to be a phenomenal time. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be there. I would love to see every single man in the house there that, uh, that morning. You can, you can register for that. You can sign up for that out at the, uh, in the foyer. Ryan's going to be out there. Uh, it costs $10 if you have this amazing breakfast. And... Uh, you know, the, the, the good thing about it is God shows up in those times. So men come, and let's not stand alone. Let's stand with each other and be there next Saturday. That's 9 o'clock next Saturday uh, with Ivan Tate, and it'll be over in uh, the other building. All right? The hangar. All right. Hey, John and Marsha, are you here in the house? To the left. Come on, come on, quick, 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 quick. Come on, come on. John is leaving on Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday's let, heading out for the Philippines back, uh, where they haven't been able to go for a long time. So it's be great to get them back on the ground there. And, and then Marsha's going to join him later in the summer. And so I want you to just stand and extend your hands towards them as we pray. Dana, would you mind coming up, head of Sounds of the Nations uh, around the world, and uh, just a super, super man that loves the nations 
And so we just pray over these two right now. Father, we release the anointing of the house upon them to walk in their own anointing that you have determined in them to spread into the nation of the Philippines. God, we cover them with your, cover them with your grace. We cover them with our prayers. We ask you to protect them as they go, as they come back, and while they are there to, to distribute your purposes and your will in that nation. And we call out to the nation of the Philippines, receive them in the name of Jesus. Receive them in the name of a missionary. Receive them in the name above all names. And we do ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. So good. Happy Father's Day, John. Yeah. Wow, it's good to see them in the house this morning, too. All right, I'll, I'll just thank those that have responded so well to the uh, financial update I gave last week and encourage you, if you weren't here last Sunday, please check it out online uh, last Sunday morning. And let's, let's remember, since Dan's in the house this morning, that the key to breakthrough is follow through. Dan taught us that. And so it's, it's time, we've, we've made declarations, part of those declarations we made this morning, but we made the declaration, we declare that no debt can survive in the atmosphere of our generosity. Based on a prophetic word by Ivan Tate, therefore we have decided to give ourselves as conduits of poverty, breaking, prosperity, and liberality. Now come on, we've said that, have we not? We've declared it, now it's time. Demonstration must follow declaration. So thank you so, for all of you who have already begun to respond. Thank you so much for that. Had just great reports of uh, people awakening to what God's calling them to and, and responding. So thank you so very, very much. Uh, I want to give away this morning, based on the, uh, the subject we're covering, that of legacy, uh, one of my books called Heroes of Hope. Uh, let me read the introduction that Deb wrote because it's far better than the introduction I wrote. And it's shorter. All right. My hope for you as you read and meditate on these stories is that you become inspired to live your life as a hero of hope. As Dave and I researched these amazing people, <clears throat> I became more convinced that these are just normal people who made extraordinary decisions to live in hope. Heroes are not born, they are created by choices. They are people who choose hope and resist the temptation to bend to circumstances and the opinions of others. Each of us has the seed of a hero residing inside. Choosing hope gives us the power to become a hero of hope for our families, our society, and for generations we will never see. My heart is filled with the expectation of good for you as you journey into becoming a hero of hope. Just stories that really build your faith, and they really are heroes of hope. They are hope-filled people. And uh, they will encourage you. So I want to give this is, uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to give it to a dad, yeah. Stephen, is your dad? In the there he is, Greg. Greg, why don't you come up here? Now, I'm not going to ask you if you've already received this and, and read it. But if you have, you can give it to somebody else. But... Greg and I share a common experience of watching our children go to heaven before us. So I bless you. Right. Love you. Which, uh, just to let you know, uh, there may be some real emotion in me today that might come out in just really strange ways. Uh, and it may not have anything to do with what I'm talking about, but it's just that there's some emotional triggers this time of year, so uh, please give me some grace there. How many will give me some grace? Uh, give me some grace there. Uh, good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Father's Day. Here, here's a description of fathers uh, by Paul Harvey, who is an author and radio commentator of the past, one of the famous ones. He says, a father is a thing that is forced to endure childbirth without an anesthetic. A father never feels worthy of the worship in the child's eyes. He never quite, <clears throat> he's never quite the hero. Ah, oh, Jesus. He's never quite the hero his daughter thinks. 
never quite the man his son believes him to be. And this worries him sometimes. So he works too hard to try and smooth the rough places in the road for those of his own who will follow him. Fathers are what give daughters away to other men who aren't nearly good enough so they can have grandchildren who are smarter than anybody's. Fathers make bets with insurance companies about who will live the longest. One day they lose, and the bet's paid off to the part of them they leave behind. Fathers. Here's something you'll never hear a father say. Well, how about that? I'm lost. <laughs> Looks like we'll have to stop and ask for directions. <laughs> never heard that. Well, I want to talk about legacy, and particularly father's legacy this morning. Uh, and let me just do a quick review of last week as we started this process. Legacy is the testimony of our life. It's, it's made up of the way we influence our, the world around us and the way we carry out our destiny. It's not the things we pass on. That's, our inher that's the inheritance we, we pass on to others that we leave to those that are alive when we aren't any longer. But it's the values and principles that we instill in others by the way we live. Inheritance is something left for those we leave behind. Legacy is something we leave in those we leave behind. Every one of us have a legacy that we've received and we have a legacy we're now creating. And this is true of all of us. And especially, I believe, true of parents. As we parent our children, we've received the legacy from our mother and father and now we have a legacy to build into the, the children we're raising. And I think as we address fathers this morning, this is especially true. And I want to say that it's a, it's a good thing to leave an inheritance for our children. It's a good thing. Uh, I, I, I love the subject, actually. I wish I had time to talk more about it this morning. Because the next generation can use some building blocks for their own financial health, and that's a good thing. However, if we fail to pass on a healthy, godly legacy, or the next generation doesn't pay attention to their legacy they are, that they are creating, their inheritance is most often lost because they don't have the base to support it. Recent study, 70% of all inheritances are gone within five years of receiving them. 70%. One third of those who receive an inheritance have nothing in their savings within two years. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but I believe one of them is that they don't understand legacy. And the parents have not passed on a legacy that allows them to support the inheritance that they receive. But a strong, healthy, godly legacy lasts a lifetime. George, would you stand, please? George Elrod is a man we all know here, right? Love George. He's, he's just a, a godly man, loves the scripture, loves people and demonstrates that all the time. So the man we see here is a 70 plus year old man, acts much younger. But I knew the 25 year old George. And have I stories to tell you. Yeah, pay me a little bit now, more, George. <laughs> so I knew him as a 25-year-old, but I knew his dad. His father was a, an official in the headquarters of the Assemblies of God, which was headquartered right in our area, as I was an associate in Santa Cruz at the time. He was a godly man, just a wonderful man. He was a father to so many people. He helped people. He loved people. He loved God's word and all of that. And so what you may not know is when you see George, you see the father of the man that stands before you. Thank you, George. <laughs> Katie, where are you? Katie. Katie May. Pa Katie Grace. Vandenberg. We all love Katie, don't we? We love the woman she is and the integrity she, she lives with and the, the character that's in her. 
Many of us know her father, right? Patrick. We, I, we, some of us knew him when he was 20 years old. And now we know him as a 50 plus year old man who has walked in integrity, has stood in difficult times, has preached the word when it wasn't popular, who is now changing nations. Katie Grace, as I look at you, I see the testimony of your dad in the woman who stands before me. God bless you. You sit down. I'd like Deborah to stand, please. I, I'm going to embarrass her. This 40 year old woman that you see before you. <laughs> We all love her. I had the privilege of loving her since I was nine years old. And uh, we all know her like this, but most of you never knew her dad. Her dad was a, a fisherman, humble man, came from Oklahoma. He said his wife, who was Italian, climbed the social ladder when she married him. He, uh, for many years, owned and operated a chandlery for a commercial fishermen. He was a great man. When he, when he died, the people that were at his funeral, this humble man, were senators, doctors. He shook hands with presidents, was invited to presidents, dinners, just because of the man he was. What you may not know is when you look at Deborah, you see the father. Her father. <laughs> a father's legacy is a powerful thing. You say, well, I, I, I don't really want to grab hold of the legacy of the father I had. I understand. But know this. Every one of us bear the mark of our heavenly father. Right? We all carry the DNA of God. The one who loved us entirely, completely, un, unforgivingly. He just loved us forgave us of everything, clear, cleared us out, made us pure, our Heavenly Father. That's the mark, and we can look at each other and say, I see your Father in you. I see your Father in you. The Bible says we see no man after the flesh. Let's look at the Father that's in all of us this morning. A Father's legacy is a powerful there's a story, and I honestly can't tell you if it's true, but I heard it years ago, and I think it's just simply a good illustration, a story. There were two, two sons who were separated at birth during World War II in Europe. One of them came to the United States and was raised by his father. The other one, they had no contact for many, many years, and they didn't even know if he was alive or the rest of the family was alive. They were Jews in Germany. So they never knew if they ended up in the gas chambers or not. And they began to investigate the one living here with his father years later when now the son has become an older man. And he finally, through all the help of the government and everything else, finally tracks down his brother. And he invites his brother to come over to the United States and his brother and everybody else is coming off the plane and he's watching to find, to see if he can spot his brother. And if, if he leans over to his wife finally and says, that's him right there. She says, how do you know that? He doesn't look anything like you. No, but he walks like his father. He walks like our father. Isn't that the thing we want to know? Be identified 
we walk like our father. A father's blessing, a father's legacy is in every one of us. Well, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Ah, I'm done. But like most preachers, I'll, I'll go on. <laughs> I just keep talking until God says something, you know. <laughs> David is, to me, uh, and his life has always been full of life lessons for me. And uh, so I'm going to look at David's life a little bit and, and his understanding of legacy. I believe David really did understand how important it was to build a legacy that he'd pass on to the next generations and on to a nation. And we see that, you know, in, in number of instances in his, in his life, we see that when he, he, he's, he's being chased by Saul all over wilderness, and he finds Saul in a cave, and Saul's, uh, those that are supposed to be guarding him are asleep, and he walks in, and he, his men say, ah, there's your moment, you can take his life. And I believe David in that moment recognized this is a decision, this is a choice that's going to help determine my destiny and determine my legacy. And instead of that, he takes a few items away from the cave. And he says, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. He makes a choice in that moment that helps define his legacy. And we see that David, even before he became king, he acted like a king. All of his life, from the moment he was anointed king, David took on that as to build his legacy from that moment on. So when he, when he comes to feed his brothers, when Goliath is challenging the Israelites. He steps on the field as a king. No, he looks like a shepherd boy. He's dressed like a shepherd boy. He has a shepherd boy's weapon. But that man is not a shepherd boy. That man stands as a king. And he takes on the giant that King Saul should have taken on. Saul abdicated. And, Saul, and David stepped in. Said, I may not be, I might not have the crown. But I have the anointing. This is who I am, and this is who I'm going to be remembered as. And we see that in, in all of his life. And, and he, you know, he wasn't perfect. David was not perfect in a lot of ways. He certainly was not a perfect father. But he still was known as the one who touched the heart of God and had the heart of God. And he established a, a legacy that is, has impact to this very day. So I want to look at a little bit more of that. I'm going to look at 1 Chronicles chapter 28. This is a point in, in David's life when he is about to die. He knows his time is over as king, and it's time to hand over the reins to his son Solomon. And in the, in the 28th and 29th chapter, he begins to describe. He, he gathers all the, the leaders of Israel, all the mighty men, all, of the, all the priests, all the leaders, and he says, it's time. And he begins to describe the fact that he is not the one to build the temple. And he goes on and talks about all the things that he's gathered so that his son can build the temple. He talks about the gold and the, and the silver and the, the metals and the, uh, the stonework and all of those things that he's gathered. Uh, he talks about the, the blueprints that he's had prepared for his son Solomon for the temple. And he, he talks about all of these things. <clears throat> the craftsmen he's gathered that could do the work that was necessary. And then there comes a time in his speech where he, he turns to his son Solomon and he has the blueprints in his hands. And can you imagine the blueprints of the temple? How massive they must have been. Heavy they were. And David laid those blueprints in Solomon's hand. Now, all that he's done in preparation for that, the handing over for the, of the building of the temple was not David's legacy. It was an inheritance that he was passing on. And then David stands before Solomon and reminds him of his legacy. He says this, David said to his son Solomon, be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear not, or be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, do you catch this, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Will you, not have, 
until you have finished all the work for the servant of the house of the Lord. What was David doing here? He was, he was talking about his own legacy and planting that, even stuff that he'd already planted in Solomon, because this is how David lived. This was David's life described. And he's saying to his son, here's your legacy. Trust the Lord your God and my God. I, I find that just fascinating to me. Don't you? Again, it's, it's important that we, I think it's important, it's something that's really on, on our heart as a family to prepare an inheritance for our sons and our children, grandchildren. But most of all, guys, it's, it's really important to pay attention to your legacy that you want your children to receive. And you say, well, when I get older, I'll worry about my legacy. Most people do that. But the fact is, you begin building your legacy the day you begin to make choices. So today is your day. If you haven't thought of it before, think of it now. The choices we make, the stands we take, the way we face adversity, how we deal with the pressure and opposition, how we deal with lack and how we deal with prosperity, this is the testimony of our lives. This is our legacy. Some people have told me, Dave, that building is yours and the church's legacy. And I said, no, it isn't. That's our inheritance. And we're to steward that inheritance. But the legacy is how God built the house and how we were instruments by the Holy Spirit to allow it to be done and to work in partnership with God to see that it's done. That's our legacy. And that's something we have yet and to continue to steward and to pass on to the generations to come so that they can stand in their day and say, the Lord our God and my Father's God is with me. And they'll be able to stand in faith and do miraculous things. Still with me? All right. Hey, I'm actually doing pretty good. That's what happens when you make notes and the dog doesn't eat them before you get here. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 15. Really, I'm not going to take much more time here, but I, I've got I've to look at this passage. To me, it's, it's just a crazy passage, something that blows my mind, and it almost sounds impossible. But listen to this. This story takes place three generations after David's death. So you can imagine, Saul was the first king, David was the second king, Solomon was the third king, and then Rehoboam, was the fourth king, and under Rehoboam's lack of wisdom and carrying out his role as king, Israel split into two kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. The kingdom of Judah was the divinic line, and the kingdom of Judah was stationed in Jerusalem, and that's what we follow here in this story. So when you read this first verse, you're going to hear King Jeroboam. Well, that was the king of what was now designated as Israel. Got it? Okay. So here we go. So remember, this is three generations after David's death. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, Abijam became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makah and granddaughter of Abishalom. Malama, lama. <laughs> they had llamas in those days. And he walked in all the sins of his father. Which he, which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord his God as was the heart of his father, David. Now remember, David was the great, great grandfather of this man. But throughout scripture, you'll find that David is referred to as the father. There's a reason for that. Verse number four, listen to this. Nevertheless, here we have a king that is failing, a king that is not doing right, a king that is, is evil in some ways. And now God is looking at this. And it, it would be appropriate for God to say, that's enough. Look, nevertheless, for David's sake. 
You talk about legacy. For David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp, which means a continuation of lineage, in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him. That son was Asa, who became one of the greatest kings in the history of Israel. By setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem, he made Jerusalem the foundation of Judah. Because David, why? Because David did, was, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Do you get and understand this? God gave an evil king a son to continue the lineage because of David's legacy. Because of David's legacy, he changed the future. He changed the future. He allowed this evil king to have a son so that Israel would have a king like Asa. It wasn't based on Abijam. It's based on David, on his legacy. And understand this, every king following David was measured by the legacy of King David. You see it over and over again. That he either walked in the ways of David or he didn't walk in the ways of his father David. That's the way it's me every king was measured from that time. Even Asa says down here in verse 11, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord as did his father David. Oh my guys. Oh, holy moly. That's a legacy that goes beyond your lifetime, that goes beyond the generation of your sons and your daughters, that goes into your grandchildren's life. We, we, we sing that song, right? For a thousand generations. Is it possible, fathers, dads in the house, that we can build a legacy that lasts far beyond our lifetime so that somebody who fails God will look at them and say, because of David, because of Joe, because of Hank, I will turn this around because of him. That's a legacy, influence with God. Oh, come on. Listen, guys, we want to pass on a legacy that can impact the future and generations to come, don't we? So let's walk in the ways of our Heavenly Father. Let's make choices the Holy Spirit guides us in and calls us to. Because every choice you make will build your legacy. I want to say just a very quick thing. I don't have time to go into it this morning. I want to talk about failure. Uh, yes, I'm talking about your neighbor. <laughs> talking about your brother-in-law. Dads fail. There's not a father in this room that hasn't made a mistake, hasn't fathered improperly, or done something that shouldn't have been done the way it was done, made a decision, a choice that was even unrighteous. Sometimes by accident, but sometimes intentional. Listen, dads fail. And it's interesting that God puts the failure of David right here on this page, and I think that's for a reason. So how do we deal with failure as a father? Moms, you can take this too, because moms, you are not perfect. Amen, thank you. How do we deal with that as a father? Well, here's how David dealt with it. And again, I don't have time. You can look it up in 2 Chronicles chapter 12. I encourage you to read the story. It's, a, it's talking about his failure with Bathsheba and Bathsheba's husband. You know the story. In a time when kings are out to war, David stayed home. Oh, there's so much right there. So much. He failed to live his destiny as king in that moment. And it cost him. He failed. We find out, and I'm not even going into the story. I want you to read it. But here's, the, here's what I've discovered very succinctly from this story. When you fail, own it. 
own it, repent. And there's a big difference between being sorry and repentance. If you go out and buy a car you shouldn't have bought and it's hurting your family, huh? You knew you shouldn't have bought it in the first place. Cost too much money. I mean, you should, could have bought the other model that was a lot less, but you did it anyway, and it's now hurting the economy of your family, and you're sorry for it. You'll keep the car and just keep moving on. But if you repent, you take the car back, and you do whatever you have to to get out of the debt. There's a difference there. So own it. Repent. Ask forgiveness for those you need to ask forgiveness for. Make repairs to those you need to. Don't be prideful in the moment of your failure and the recognition of your failure. Own it. But here's what's really important. Own it, but don't let it own you. Don't let it own you. When you have repented, God takes care of that. And when you've gone to the people you need to go to and you ask forgiveness, all of that is, is wiped. And you can't carry that the rest of your life. It will own you, and it will, it will color the decisions you make. So own it, but don't let it own you. That's all I'm going to say about that, but let me just say this. As we develop our legacy dads, and moms too, as we go after that, know this, you're not alone. You don't have to do this by yourself. You don't have to do it by yourself. Now, I'm just talking about the people around you. That's, that's part of it. But more than that, you have the best guide into truth living right inside of you. The Holy Spirit is there to help you with those decisions. And if we listen to him, he will guide us. He will help us through the rough times. He will even say, oh, 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 no, don't, don't go there. And if we listen and be responsive to him, we can form a legacy that will go on for generations. Now, you say, I've made too many mistakes. No, this is the time to, to fix that, right? You say, God, I am so sorry, man. I should, have, I should have paid more attention to the legacy of my life. But right now is your time to do that. And that's your choice. So there's, no, there's not one of us here that can't have a great legacy to hand our children. Uh, like a uh, worship team, you come up, please. Real quickly. I'm proud of myself this morning. <laughs> Trying to get, get the fathers into line so they can get a prophetic word this morning and then to eat their cookies. Their homemade cookies. Yeah, made by Jennifer Bernardo. A special recipe. Special recipe. So fathers, I'd like you to stand. All the fathers in the house, would you stand? And I would like also single moms if you're here. Because you carry an anointing that God's given you to raise that family. So single moms and all the dads in the house. And I want to give you a father's blessing. It's familiar to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, give you peace.
to stand. Because I want Katie to sing this song over us all here today and receive this as a Father's blessing into our lives today. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you can sing along with it if you want to. And I Until you have finished all the work. Come on, from this day on, from this day on. Give him a hand clap of praise. Come on. 
somebody to pray for you this morning. Come on down there. People would love to pray for you. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. Check out the store. Get the Father's Day gifts you forgot. John and Marcia, God bless you. Go in the name of the Lord.